Hey y'all, I know you clicked that thumbnail expecting to see some booty butt cheeks, but unfortunately my friend, there will be no booty butt cheeks in this video, but I hope you stay to the end. If this is your first time, welcome to my channel. If you are a returning experiencer, welcome back. My name is Hathor Hendricks and this is my YouTube channel, The Hathor Experience. So if you like what you see and hear today, be a dear and go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell so you will know or be notified when I post my next video. So let's get into it. Twerk something is the name of the video. Why you ask? Well, I was inspired by recent events. About a few weeks ago, maybe even a month or so ago, there were a group of ladies who were kicked out of an upscale restaurant in Dallas, Texas for twerking. Yes, bouncing that ass. So the community in the diaspora was in an uproar. On one side, you had the women saying, oh, well, I can shake my ass wherever I want to. I can twerk my ass near, far, in a bar, in a car, okay? And then you had the other side saying, that's just shameful just the disgrace see that's why they can't give black people nothing that's why we can't nobody takes us seriously and this video is basically my stance on twerk culture so i hope to inspire empower and provoke thought nothing more nothing less i'm not trying to be famous but i will take the fortune holla at you girl we're gonna keep rolling so this all starts with google i googled the definition of twerking and this is what google says it says that twerking is dancing in a sexually provocative manner thrusting movements of the bottom while in a low squatting stance origin unknown so if you know me you know if you're just now tuning in, you may not know, but I am a dancer and I've danced for the greater part of my life. And because of that, I've had the opportunity to study many different forms of dance. So even before I was classically trained or attended a dance class, I was moving. I was moving in my diaper. We see babies mean dancing all the time. Dancing is something that human beings do naturally, okay? And as a child, even though I may be shaking my little coconuts, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to be sexually provocative. It's more of how the music moves through me or how I engage with the music. That's all about dance. Dance to me is like, a physical manifestation of what the sound of music can do to your body. One of my favorite forms of dance that I studied was West African dance. And I loved it because I kind of wanted to get closer to my roots being Afro-American, never having been to Africa, but still being intrigued by the culture. And I was so glad I did. It was so grounding, it was so energizing, it was so uplifting in the drums. Y'all remember that movie Jumanji when you would just hear the drums do 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 like drawing you into a trance? That's what African dance does for me. And the beautiful part about African dance is everything is intentional. Everything has a purpose. And once you realize that, you realize that African dance just isn't performative. It's actually an expression of spirituality, of praise, of celebration, of gratitude. And each rhythm and each dance has a story and a reason behind why and when it is performed. So in some of those dances, you do accentuate your breasts. 
You do accentuate your hips, but it's not to be sexually provocative. I recall there's even a dance where we are celebrating the coming of age of young women. And there are also coming of age dances for young men. And we see many different kinds of coming of age ceremonies throughout different cultures. Jewish people have bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs. You have quinceaneras, you have sweet 16s, you have cotillions. So even though every culture finds a different way to celebrate its milestones, it's still a celebration. It's still some tradition and some pride that's put behind it. And most importantly, some intent. So to take this spiritual force, this spiritual practice that is dancing and qual 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 call it twerking is a great disservice. Not to the people that twerk, because again, this is a natural reaction. When the beat drops, you want to dance. It's in your blood. That's just how music affects the body. However, environment also plays a huge, huge part on how the music moves you. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't necessarily love trap music. Not that I think I'm better than anybody, but you see, I'm a little old fashioned. I don't like people calling me bitches and hoes and telling me to get on the floor. No, but I do love Afro beats because those guys know how to talk to ladies. They're swooners. They're saying all the sweet things to get you to work at that waist and keep your dignity. I love Afro Caribbean and dance hall music because it gives you a boost of energy, boost your confidence. You're like, yeah, I am the best. Yes, I am blessed. Shout out to Shinsia. So there again, the environment matters. I recall growing up and going to restaurants and they were playing smooth jazz or soul music or instrumental. So, I mean, again, <laughs> play trap music, trap shit happens. But I digress. We're going to get back to the whole dancing thing and back to the environment. And speaking of environment, the environment is a representation of you. So let's go a little deeper into it. Let's talk about representation. I know a lot of us are individuals. A lot of us are unicorns and we speak for ourselves and there's no one else like us in the world. Check my fingerprint. I get it. I totally get it. But saying that representation doesn't matter is a total farce. Don't believe me. I got a few examples. Example one. I'm going to speak for myself and most of the people that I know. If I'm watching the news and something has gone down that's awful and unheard of, one of the first questions that we ask ourselves or others is, what color were they? Please don't let them have been black. Or if you're another color, oh, please don't let them have been Latina. Oh, please don't let them have been white, right? Because they represent you, even though you've never met this person or you have, their actions represent people that look like you, okay? I'll give you another example if that didn't work for you. I like to do a lot of traveling, and one of the first times I went abroad to Germany, I was greeted with duck lips. Hey, girl, yes, girl, period, neck rolls. All of it. I thought they was going to try and dance battle me. And I had to put them in their place really quick and be like, I'm sorry, you just met me. What about me made you feel as though you should be comfortable addressing me like that or that I welcome it? Not that I'm ashamed of it, but you don't know me. Okay. So again, in that instance, they didn't know me, but they assumed because of the things that they'd seen on social media and the internet that that was how they were to communicate with me or that's exactly how they see me and unfortunately a lot of people are entirely too lazy to take the time to get to know you personally and your character so whether you like it or not representation does matter and that even goes back 
into this whole twerking thing and it just being wrote off as something sexually provocative. Okay, this is a means of celebration. Okay, a lot of people throughout the African diaspora, whether you are a descendant of slavery or colonialism or colonization, we were dissuaded from practicing our normal practices. They were saying that they were primitive, that they were sacrilegious. And because of that, a lot of us started to do our best to disassociate from those things. I mean, we were beaten, we were killed, we were hung when we expressed ourselves. So there's definitely a negative stigma that is tied to that. But again, representation matters. So there, wherever we landed or wherever we stayed within the diaspora, we created ways to still give that praise and practice that spirituality in our environments. Again, another form of representation and there are different ways that that's expressed, okay? We have Afro-Caribbean movements, we have Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Latina, we have belly dancing, which is North African, okay? We have West and South African dance, which one focuses more on footwork, one focuses more on waistlines, again, all throughout the diaspora, we practice dance as a means of spiritualism or spiritual practice. All right, so that's one side of the spectrum. I'm going to play devil's advocate here because I actually make a living off of empowering women and helping them to reconnect to their femininity. There's a lot of miseducation that has to happen within women because we have been told for so long and shamed for so long about expressing our femininity, expressing ourselves, the way we dance, the way we look, and it's gotten really hard. A lot of women are so repressed because they refuse or they deny themselves the opportunity to be themselves and dance the way they want to, and that leads to stagnation. That leads to disease, that leads to illness, and that's mental and physical. Being depressed, being anxious, being angry. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes you just need to shake a little something. It's healing. It's therapeutic. So I don't think that it's a matter of censorship. I don't think that you should just outlaw dancing. Nobody should twerk. You're wrong if you do it. You're a skeezer if you twerk. I think it's more of discernment. There's a time and a place for everything. And there are safe spaces out there where women can express themselves and reconnect with themselves and liberate themselves without compromising themselves. And I happen to hold many of those spaces. I like to teach West African dance as well as belly dance, and I will be uploading virtual workouts here on this channel, and you will be one of the first to try them out. So be sure, again, to like, comment, subscribe, share, and ring that bell so you can get notification, okay? And hey, I think I said a mouthful. I know I said a lot. Maybe there was some rambling. Maybe there wasn't. And I bet you're thinking, hey, who are you? And hey, I'm no expert. This is just my experience. And this is my channel, The Hathor Experience. So until next week, I hope y'all take care of yourselves. Thanks for your ears. Peace.